नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय हरे कृष्णा सो टुडे वी आर रीडिंग फ्रॉम ग्रंथराज श्रीमद भागवतम कैंट टू चैप्टर थ्री टेक्स्ट टू टू सेवन ब्रह्मा वर्चस कामस्तु यजेत ब्रह्मण पतिम इंद्रम इंद्रिय कामस्तु प्रजा काम प्रजापति ब्रह्मवर्चस कामस्तु यजेत ब्रह्मण पतिम इंद्रम इंद्रिय कामस्तु प्रजा काम प्रजापति ट्रांसलेशन एंड पोर्पोर्ट बाय हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस एसी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी शील प्रभुपाद की वन हु डिजायर्स टू बी एब्सॉर्ब इन द इम्पर्सनल ब्रह्मा ज्योति एफुलजेंस शुड वर्शिप द मैस्टर ऑफ द वेदर्स लॉर्ड ब्रह्मा और बृहस्पति द लर्न इट प्रीस्ट one who desires powerful sex life should worship the heavenly king indra and one who desires good progeny should worship the great progenitors called the prajapatis one who desires good fortune should worship durga devi the superintendent of the material world one desiring to be very powerful should worship fire and one who aspires only after money should worship the vasus one should worship the rudra incarnation of lord shiva if he wants to be a great hero one who wants a great stock of grains should worship aditi one who desires to attain the heavenly planets should worship the sons of aditi one who desires a worldly kingdom should worship vishwadeva and one who wants to be popular with general mass of population should worship the sadhya demigod one who desires a long span of life should worship the demigods known as the ashwini kumaras and a person desiring a strongly built body should worship the earth one who desires stability in his post should worship the horizon and the earth combined one who desires to be beautiful should worship the beautiful residents of the gandharva planet and one who desires a good wife should worship the apsaras and the urvashi society girls of the heavenly kingdom <laughs> some are even saying hari bol to that <laughs> one who desires domination over others should worship lord brahma the head of the universe one who desires tangible fame should worship the personality of godhead and one who desires good bank balance very beautiful verse <laughs> should worship the demigod varuna one who desires to be greatly learned man should worship lord shiva and if one desires good marital relation he should worship the chaste goddess uma the wife of lord shiva purport by shila prabhu pa shila prabhu pa ji ki there are different modes of worship for different persons desiring success in particular subjects the conditioned soul living within the purview of the material world cannot be an expert in every type of materially enjoyable asset but one can have considerable influence over a particular matter by worshiping a particular demigod as mentioned above ravana was made a powerful man by worshiping lord shiva and he used to offer severed heads to please lord shiva he became so powerful by the grace of lord shiva that all the demigods were afraid of him until he at last challenged the personality of god at shri ramachandra bhagavan ki and thus ruined himself in other words all such persons who aspire after gaining some or the other material objects of enjoyment or gross materialistic persons are on the whole less intelligent as confirmed in the bhagavad gita chapter 7 text 20 
it is said there that those who are bereft of all good sense or those whose intelligence is withdrawn by the deluding energy of maya aspire to achieve all sorts of material enjoyment in life by pleasing various demigods or by advancing in material civilization under the heading of scientific progress. The real problem of life in the material world is to solve the question of birth, death, old age and disease. No one wants to change his birthright. No one wants to meet death. No one wants to be old or invalid and no one wants diseases. But these problems are solved neither by the grace of any demigod nor by so-called advancement of material science. In the Bhagavad Gita, as well as in Srimad Bhagavatam, such less intelligent persons have been described as devoid of all good sense. Srila Shukadev Goswami has said, out of 8.4 million species of living entities, the human form of life is rare and valuable. And out of those rare human beings, those who are conscious of the material problems are rarer still. And still more rare persons are those who are conscious of the value of Srimad Bhagavatam. Which contains the messages of the Lord and his pure devotees. Death is inevitable for everyone, intelligent or foolish. But Parikshit Maharaj has been addressed by the Goswami as Manishi or the man of highly developed mind. Because at the time of death, he left all material enjoyment and completely surrendered unto the lotus feet of the Lord by hearing his messages from the right person, Srila Shukadev Goswami. But aspirations for material enjoyment by endeavoring persons are condemned. Such aspirations are something like the intoxication of the degraded human society. Intelligent persons should try to avoid these aspirations and instead seek the permanent life by returning home back to Godhead. Granthraj Srimad Bhagavatam ki? By the insurmountable instruction of His Grace Radha Gopinath Prabhu. <laughs> which I tried my best to avoid. <laughs> I am here in the presence of so many wonderful Vaishnavas with a mood to serve all of you this morning. I don't know what will come out of my unholy mouth. I don't know what I'm going to speak. I don't know how many mistakes I am going to make from a scriptural perspective, from an ethical perspective, from a Vaishnava perspective, from a linguistic grammatical perspective. Brahma Pramada Vipralipsa Karana Patav Arsha Vidnya Vakya Nahi Dosha Aesab. Chaitanya Charitamrita has described condition soul means he will make mistakes. So to err is human, but to forgive is divine. So I am starting by begging at all of your lotus feet, each one of you individually, and all of you put together collectively, I beg at your lotus feet. Please bless me. May the right words come at the right time, in the right mood of service. And whatever mistakes come out of my mouth, please forgive me. I feel very scared sitting here. <laughs> we'll talk about that in a bit. <laughs> but before that, please bless me. Please protect me. Please make sure on the power of your prayers and blessings, may this discussion give pleasure to our Shishi Radha Gopinath. Vancha <laughs> Kalpataru. This Vyasasan has nourished me for years. His Holiness, Srila Radhanath Swami Maharaj, sitting here on this auspicious Vyaspeet, Vyasasan, like a mother, has nourished all of us as babies with the breast milk of his Harikatha for years. Today, I feel like I am sitting on the lap of that mother. Yeah. 
I remember when I had gone to America and I was all by myself. I had no money and no family, no friends. The closest temple was two and a half hours away. From my place, I had to take multiple modes of transport. Take a bus and then walk. So that bus goes one and a half hours, then get down from there, then walk, then take two trains, then walk and reach the temple. During those days, I would go to the temple only once a month because I didn't have the money to go. And it was very difficult. The place where I used to live, it used to snow so much and the sun would set at 2.30 in the afternoon. So gloomy, inside and out. And I shared my apartment with four other people, all of whom who ate meat. And so much so that the fridge used to be filled with pork and chicken and whatnot. And when it was my turn to clean the kitchen, I used to see all obnoxious things on the floor and just pick them up, put them in the trash can and mop the whole place. When I had no association, no devotee to meet, nowhere to go, no friend, I would put on Srila Radhanath Swami Maharaj's class. And for hours and for years, it kept me going. But there was one thing. You can chant Japa alone, you can hear Harikatha alone, but what about Kirtan? You need devotees, right? You need devotees, you need that association where you can sing and dance. So I miss that. So I would switch on Maharaj's Kirtan. Of course, Maharaj has thousands and thousands of Kirtan, but my personal favorite has been the 2004 Brindavan Yatra series, where Maharaj did Kirtan at Man Mandir. Ecstatic Kirtan. For those who haven't watched it, please, that's the homework even before the class begins. <laughs> I would s close my door, close all windows, and put the curtain in my little room, and on my laptop put that kirtan on full screen, play that kirtan, and dance alone. <laughs> and I would think I am in Man Mandir with Maharaj, in the yatra with devotees, and as Maharaj's kirtan would peek up, and since the doors were closed and the windows were closed and the curtains were put, nobody to judge, nobody to see, I would feel as if I am part of that association and I would sing and dance thinking that nobody is watching. But why I am saying this is that imagination of mine today has become reality. And when I had the good fortune of meeting Srila Radhanath Maharaj, I told Maharaj that, Maharaj, when I sit at your lotus feet, I feel I'm sitting with my Guru Maharaj. I'm sitting with Srila Radha Govinda Maharaj. I don't feel like leaving you. Because it was a line where one after another you have to take darshan and leave. And I just stood there. And I offered my obeisance and I said, I don't feel like leaving. Maharaj said, you don't have to leave. <laughs> and when I said about my Guru Maharaj, I said, I feel like when I'm sitting with you, I feel like I'm sitting with my Guru Maharaj. At that time, Srila Radhanath Maharaj told me, he said, back in 2007, 2008, when Srila Radha Govinda Maharaj gave classes in Hindi, in public pandal, Maharaj, Srila Radhanath Swami Maharaj said, I would go and meet your Guru Maharaj. And then Maharaj said, I feel the whole world should learn Hindi to hear the classes of Srila Radha Govinda Maharaj. So I, I looked at Maharaj and I said, Maharaj, I feel the reason my parents put me in an English medium school was so that I could hear your English classes. <laughs> And when I said, Maharaj, when I sit with you, I feel like I'm sitting with my Guru Maharaj and I don't feel like leaving you. Maharaj said something 
so profound which went into my heart and I prayed to the lotus feet of Radha Gopinath, I never forget. Look at the gravity and the depth of this one sentence. Srila Radhanath Swami Maharaj said, hmm? so my point was, Maharaj, I want to be with you forever. I don't feel like leaving you. To which Srila Radhanath Swami Maharaj said, my eternal aspiration is to be a speck of dust at the lotus feet of Srila Radha Govinda Maharaj. If your aspiration is also the same, you and I can be together forever. <laughs> there was expression of extreme humility. At the same time, there was an expression of connecting the disciple to the guru. At the same time, there was an expression of future hope of always being together. All of that in one sentence. So why I am saying this is I don't know if I will be able to come here ever again. I don't know. But today, Prathamam tu gurum pujyam anyatha nishphala bhavet. Hari Bhakti Vilas describes if you don't express gratitude to Guru, then Krishna is not even listening to the glorification that we offer. So sitting here, it will be ungrateful of me. It will be incomplete and completely against Vaishnav culture if I don't express my gratitude and don't offer my Shraddha Pushpanjali at the lotus feet of Srila Radhanath Swami Maharaj before I attempt to speak something in the presence of His Ishtadev, Shri Radha Gopinath. So, in today's verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, Srila Prabhupada in the purport <coughs> explains how we should take shelter of Krishna. The verse mentions that for any material aspiration that we may have, we should worship the demigods. But Srila Prabhupada in the purport, he clarifies that ultimately, devotee doesn't want anything material. It is like going to the prisoner in the prison house and saying, today is Independence Day. Ask for a benediction and I'll give you. And the prisoner says, really? Whatever I ask you will give me? Yes. Whatever you ask, I will give you. And the prisoner says, one extra soap, please. soap <laughs> Please make it two. So the jailer says, so be it. Next prisoner. Today is Independence Day. Ask for whatever you want. Ek blanket de dona. Just give me an extra blanket. Oh, sure. Take it. Third person. Ask for whatever you want. Whatever I want? Yes, whatever you want. Today is Independence Day. Ask for what you want and I'll give you. Whatever I want? Yes, whatever you want. Free me from this jail. <laughs> Isn't that the most intelligent thing? Srila Prabhupada is explaining that in the purport. That we are all like prisoners begging the demigods for extra soap and extra blanket, extending our material stay. But Mukti Pradata Sarvesham Vishnu Revana Samshaya. The only person who can free us from this material existence and engage us completely in the service of his lotus feet is Sri Hari himself. So Srila Prabhupada has written in the purport, it is our duty to take complete shelter of Krishna and only beg for one thing, His eternal service and nothing else. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the celebrated Shikshashtakam. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has said, Na dhanam, na janam, na sundari. This na in Sanskrit could have been just used at the start of the sentence and just say, na dhanam, janam, sundarim. And it would mean the same. But Mahaprabhu individually uses the na kar, negation. Na dhanam, na janam, na sundari. My Lord, please don't trap me with material attractions and allurements in this world. Like when the child cries, the mother comes and says, Hey, look at this toy. <laughs> Such a beautiful toy. Teddy bear, teddy bear. And the child starts to giggle. And the mother says, Now you sit here. And the mother goes and 
starts making rotis again and again the child starts to cry the mother comes take you back <laughs> she does this a few times and then finally when none of the teddy bear none of the toys will work the child starts to cry and yell throwing his legs in the air and the mother comes and says teddy bear the child says this won't work this time <laughs> i want you i am hungry none of the teddy bear none of the toys none of the play things about none of these key oriented toys will help i am hungry oh mother i want you that's when the mother gives up the kitchen and comes for the child and embraces the child when we cry in this world krishna as the mother comes and gives us some material things and we are happy dhanam chamanam cha yathendriyani krishna gives all of that but when that time comes when we say my lord i don't want any of these things na dhanam na janam na sundari i want you mama janmani janmani ishwari i don't even want mukti mukti means what i don't want to suffer in this world bhukti means i want to enjoy and mukti means i don't want to suffer in both sentences it's about me but bhakti means my lord krishna anushilanam anukulyena krishna anushilanam it's not about me anymore it's about you let me serve you lifetime after lifetime nanyam jane naiva jane na jane ram raksha stotra that my lord shri ramachandra apart from your service i don't want anything else in the 6th canto of shrimad bhagavatam vritrasur has chanted nanaka prashtham न च पारमेष्ठम न सार्वभौम न रसाधिपत्यम न योग सिद्धि न पुरर्भव वमंजसत्वाहय्यकांक्षे हियर ऑल्सो बिफोर एवरी ऑब्जेक्ट नकार हेज बीन यूज्ड न नाक पृष्ठम प्लीज डोंट गिव मी हेवेन प्लीज डोंट मेक मी एन असोसिएट ऑफ ध्रुव एंड ध्रुव लोक na cha paramaishyam don't send me to brahma lok and make me vidhata don't make me brahma kita janma ho yatha tu vadas bahir mukha brahma janmi nahi as shila bhakti vinod thakur says i am better to become an insect in the house of a pure devotee than to become brahma who doesn't remember the supreme lord our life is meant to get service eternal loving service nothing else prema dhana bina vyartha daridra jeevan shila gaur govind maharaj would roar on this point prema dhana bina vyartha daridra jeevan he would he would ask devotees are you rich tell me baba are you rich and the devotee would say if they say yes finished <laughs> if they say yes then finished you're rich what type of dhana do you have what kind of wealth do you have and if they say no i am not rich i am poor then shila gaur govind maharaj will say mukhe bole only through the tongue you're saying it's not in the heart <laughs> shila gaur govind maharaj went to uk in one house and in the owner of the house he asked whose house is this Shila Gaur Govind Maharaj asked the owner of the house in the Grihastha program, "Whose house is this?" Now, if he says it is my house, <laughs> so he folded his palms and he said, "Maharaj, it is not my house. It is Krishna's house." Then Shila Gaur Govind Maharaj said, "Then what are you doing here?" <laughs> so he didn't know what to do shila gaur govind maharaj said out get out and he was still sitting shila gaur govind maharaj said mukhe bole through the tongue you're saying it is not my house but sutamita ramani ra chinta constantly thinking of athagraha kshetra sutapta vittai this is sadhu dhride na chitwa through the sword of their words they can cut our material attachments सो नाक पृष्ठम न चपारमैष्ठ्यम न सार्वभौम न रसाधिपत्यम 
Vritrasura said, my Lord, I don't want heaven. I don't want to become Brahma. I don't want to rule this world. I don't want to go and become like Bali Maharaj in Sutal Lok. Na Yoga Siddhi. I don't want to be great. Na Punar Bhavamva. I don't want to get liberated even. The only thing I want. Na Viraha. May I never be separated from your lotus feet. This is all that I want. Chauni Patitva Mathava Eka Makinchanatvam. Nityam dadasi bahumanam athapamanam, vaikuntha vasam athava narake nivasam, ha vasudeva mamanasti gatistva danya. Shri Garbha Kaviraj Goswami, a very great Vaishnava Acharya, Rup Goswami has quoted him. He says, my Lord, you have two options. You always have two options. I have only one. What are the two options? Kshauni patitvam athava eka makinchanatvam. You can make me a king or you can make me a beggar. Two options. Nityam dadasi bahumanam. You can make me very popular in this world. Athava apamanam. Or you can make me completely criticized in this world. Vaikunthavasam. You can bring me back to your abode. Athava narake nivasam. Or you can send me down to naraka. You always have two options. But since I have surrendered to you, I have only one option. Wherever you keep me, I am ready. <laughs> you have to think this or this for me it's very simple wherever you keep me I am happy whatever you give me I am happy whatever you take away I am happy whatever you make out of me I am happy my lord ultimately I just want one thing please keep me at your lotus feet there is nothing else that I want this is the aim of our life to come to this point. Ahaituki apratihata yayatma suprasidati. And to the extent one aspires for this, to that extent one is blissful and peaceful in this world. Chaitanya Charitamrit describes Mora putra, mora sakha, mora pranapati, e bhave jay more kare shuddha bhakti, apanaka badamane amashama heen, e bhave ami hoe tahara adhin. Krishna has said, those who have mamata for me, possessive affection for me, like Mother Yashoda, more putra. If you go and tell Mother Yashoda, do you know your son is God? She will say, he is not a joint account. <laughs> because God is God for everyone. So if someone says, Krishna is God, Mother Yashoda would immediately cut the point by saying, don't make my Krishna a joint account. He is a personal account. <laughs> Mora putra. Mora sakha. You go to the friends of Krishna and you say, do you know your friend is God? The friend will laugh. <laughs> God? <laughs> Oh, wow, God. <laughs> this is what uh, they will wait and look at the other friends. Oh, what is that person's name? The Char Mukhwale Aite. Brahma, Brahma. Ah, this is what Brahmaji also came and said. That you are God. We were laughing at a distance. What kind of God steals from others' house? <laughs> eats dirt. Eats with his left hand. Speaks lies. Cries, hides, feels hungry, feels thirsty, gets angry, starts jumping on others' back, cheats. When it is time for hide and seek, when he has to hide, he's very happy. <laughs> but when time comes for others to hide and he has to find them, he runs home. <laughs> <laughs> So what kind of God is that? Mora Sakha. He's my friend. That I agree. So Mora Putra, Mora Sakha, Mora Pranapati. Like how Srimati Radharani has mood. Madhuri Rati. So Mora Putra, Mora Sakha, Mora Pranapati. Ei Bhave, Jai More Kare Shuddha Bhakti. In this mood, those who have affection, Krishna is saying, and those who serve me with unadulterated devotion, no other intention. Apana ke bada mana. Sometimes they consider themselves higher and me lower, like Mother Yashoda. 
she always considers krishna to be lower and she is the mother she will never pray to krishna you please protect me she will tell krishna if i don't protect you what will happen to you <laughs> you are not eating on time this is why you are becoming very thin krishna shila prabhupada writes in nectar of devotion as krishna was growing up he became so plump that on both sides of his hips he had three lines <laughs> three flaps of skin folded because of all the rasgullas and gulab jamuns <laughs> and shila prabhupad writes those three lines are called trivali trivali three lines and krishna would walk like this <laughs> and mother yashoda would still look at krishna and say you have become so thin you are not eating properly apna ke bada mana ama savahin ei bhave ami hoy tahar adhin krishna has said in chaitanya charitamrita when this is the mood of a devotee selfless love so only thinking of krishna's service attachment to the service at the lotus feet of krishna expecting nothing in return krishna says by this i am bound by nothing else what is the position of mother yashoda's love shila prabhupad writes in canto 10 chapter 9 text 3 purport that anyone who wants to approach krishna in vatsalya rati the mood of parental love they must pray and remember mother yashoda kshaumam vasa prithukati tate bibrati sutra naddham putra sneha snuta kucha yuga jatakam pancha supruhu rajvakarsh shrama bhuja chalat kankanam kundale cha swinnam vak tram kavar vigalan malati nirmamantha shila shukdev goswami describes mother yashoda's love for krishna chaumam vasah prithu kati tate bibrati sutra nadham describe that mother yashoda on the day of diwali the day when damodar leela took place chaumam vasah she dressed herself in saffron cloth saffron colored saree representing complete dedication kshaumam vasah prithukati tate bibrati sutra nadham and it is described mother yashoda had a belt around her waist acharyas describe unless you are practicing yourself how can you bind somebody else <laughs> so mother yashoda first had belt around her own navel ha huh? jaise hindi mein kehte kamar kaske seva karna so mother yashoda had a belt around her waist and because janma sarthaka kari now she can do that for krishna also kshaumam vasah prithukati tate bibrati sutra nadham putra sneha snuta kucha yugam jata kampam cha subruhu mother yashoda is bringing so much milk and trying to make butter mother yashoda was thinking i am not making butter for krishna this is why he is going everywhere and eating so i will make butter myself and she is collecting milk from so many padmaganda cows acharyas right the milk in the body of mother yashoda from her heart started telling mother yashoda why go outside when charity begins at home <laughs> motherly love is like a waterfall like a fountain coming from the heart of mother yashoda in the form of her breast milk and that milk said have you forgotten us now seeing this that milk started boiling so now both milk are boiling one milk of the heart in the body of mother yashoda is thinking you are going outside and getting the milk from the cows what about us hamara to jeevan hi vifal we are living only so that we can get into krishna's mouth and now to feed krishna you are going around and getting milk from other cows what about us thinking like this the milk from the heart started coming out but seeing this now that milk will go into krishna's mouth the milk on the stove started saying hum yahan jal jal ke tapasya kar rahe hain hum jal jal ke yahan tapasya kar rahe hain aur phir bhi we cannot we cannot enter krishna's mouth hamara to jeevan hi dhikkar hai our life is wasted thinking like this they were over boiling and jumping into fire hum to atmahatya karenge 
So amidst all this, the acharyas say, Rajwa karsha shrama bhuja chalat kankanam kundalecha. Mother Yashoda is pulling the ropes. Huh? Pulling the ropes. And she is doing kirtan. Yani yani ha gitani tadbal charitani cha. Dadhi nirmantane kale smaranti tanya gayata. She is making a Brajbhasha songs glorifying Krishna. Not Purusha Sukta, Shri Sukta from the Vedas. Mother Yashoda is making her songs. And she is calling out to Krishna. Not literally calling out, but from her heart she is making up songs and she is singing with so much affection. Karmana Manasa Vacha. Mind is thinking of Krishna. The tongue is singing Krishna's glories and the hands are performing seva. This is perfect. This is BMW. <laughs> from body, from mind and through words. Perfect BMW. She's offering her BMW in the service of Krishna. <laughs> Everybody, Krishna has given all of us BMWs in this way. <laughs> so we can use that. So as Mother Yashoda is churning, it is described, her bangles have become the kartal. And the movement of the rod has become the tal on the murdanga. So the movement of the rod has become the mridanga beat. And the, the kartals are being played by the bangles. So Mother Yashoda is singing and playing the kartal and also the mridanga and sundar kirtan is going on. Very beautiful. And Krishna has said, Naha masami vai kunthe. Yogi namrida yeshuva yatra gayanti mat bhaktaha tatratishthami narada. I don't live in the hearts of the yogis, nor do I live in Vaikuntha, but where my pure devotees sing my glories, I give up my sleep and go there. So Yoga Nidra, Vishnu, Krishna is sleeping in the next bedroom, he gives up his Yoga Nidra. But there is a problem. He is scared of getting down the bed. <laughs> the size, the height of the bed is so much, Krishna's legs are only so much. How to get down now? I want to go to Mother Yashoda, but the height is too much. So Krishna flips on his belly and wriggles backwards. <laughs> on his belly and now he wriggles backwards. And now he's trying to touch the ground with his leg. And as soon as the leg touched the ground. <laughs> God, even if he tries, he can't have a fall down. <laughs> Krishna runs to Mother Yashoda. And at that time the Acharyas describe, in this meeting of Mother Yashoda and Krishna, Swinnam Vaktram, Mother Yashoda's forehead is full of perspiration, sweat drops. What does that mean? Our Acharyas explain. Mother Yashoda's hair is like the black cloud. And wherever there is cloud, there must be rain. So these sweat drops are very beautiful, drizzling rain from the cloud of the blackish curls of the hair of Mother Yashoda. At the same time, Mother Yashoda's face is like a lotus flower. And wherever there is lotus flower, there must be dew drops. There must be dew drops, early morning dew drops on the lotus petals. So Mother Yashoda's face is like a lotus flower. And these are beautiful dew drops decorating the lotus of her face. Or we can say, getting decorated by the lotus of her face. Another interpretation given is, today is the day of Diwali. When the Leela takes place. It's the day of Diwali. And everyone is coming out of their house and placing lamps and decorating very beautiful, wonderful doorsteps. But Mother Yashoda has given up the lamp and she's busy serving Krishna. So this has become her courtyard. And these are lit lamps of love. Oh. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur has said, Hobe prem pradipe arati tomar. These are Prema Pradipa. Mother Yashoda's sweat drops are actually lamps of affection for Krishna. How much love Mother Yashoda has for Krishna? Aha. It is described when she saw Krishna, she saw eight lotus 
petals or eight lotus flowers in the body of Krishna. Baby Krishna is born. Mother Yashoda is looking. Two eyes are lotus. Two palms are lotus. Two feet are lotus. Navel is lotus. Which is the eighth lotus? The face is lotus. <laughs> Mother Yashoda is playing with baby Gopal. And it is described as Mother Yashoda takes baby Gopal and embraces with so much affection to her chest. Mother Yashoda bathes Krishna with her milk. In this context, Srila Rupa Goswami writes in Bhaktira Samrit Sindhu. Whenever deities are installed, there is Abhishek and milk must be used to bathe the deities. And Srila Rupa Goswami describes, Bal Gopal has just appeared. So Prana Pratishta has to be done now by a pure devotee. So Mother Yashoda is doing the Abhishek of this deity with the milk coming from her heart. At the same time, Krishna, it's described Krishna is being bathed in the Triveni Sangam. What is Triveni Sangam? How many rivers? Three rivers. What are the three rivers? Ganga, Yamuna, Saraswati. What are the colors? Ganga, white. Yamuna, dark, black. And Saraswati, kind of reddish, the tinge of red. Saraswati seen? No, invisible. But Ganga and Yamuna mixing can be seen. So it is described as Mother Yashoda embraces baby Gopal to her chest with so much affection. There is a Triveni there. Why? Because the milk from the heart of Mother Yashoda is the white Ganga. But looking at Krishna, she cries with so much affection and the tears mix with her kajal and they flow blackish. These two mixing can be seen. But the third Saraswati mixing, Saraswati is the love from her heart, which is invisible. And that love is Anurag, which is reddish in color. <laughs> so our Acharyas describe how much love Mother Yashoda has. Our Bhakti Vigyan Maharaj was once explaining that if someone hears the pastimes of Krishna, it is possible their heart may not melt. It is possible because of some offenses. If they hear the pastimes of Mother Yashoda also, it is possible their heart may not melt if they have offenses. But Maharaj was explaining, if they hear the pastimes of the motherly love of Mother Yashoda and the very sweet, wonderful, affectionate glancing and the reciprocation of baby Gopal and these, this interaction, this reciprocation, even the hardest stone-like hearts will melt and become like butter and then this butter thief will come and steal it away. <laughs> this is how our Shastras and our Acharyas describe. Mother Yashoda has been described very wonderfully. Her hair is parted and she has sindur or kumkum. And at the same time, very wonderful ornaments. She looks very beautiful. Shastra describes Mother Yashoda is in the complexion of a bluish lotus flower, Shamangi. And therefore, when she looked at Krishna, she said, look, you look like me. <laughs> because Nanda Baba is very fair. Nanda Baba is saying, you're only speaking about Yashoda Rani, something about me too. Okay, okay. Nanda Maharaj ki? Yes. So Nanda Baba has been described by Srila Rupa Goswami in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu also as Nanda Baba being someone who has black hair but little grey strands in the middle. And he wears the dress which is greenish like the color of a banyan leaf. And Nanda Maharaj has moustache like the king of Braja. He is the king of Braja, but the, like the king in general. He has a moustache. At the same time, it is described Nanda Maharaj also has some belly fat. <laughs> Not like the IT goers, please. <laughs> Post COVID, everybody. Because in COVID, the table is up to here. So everyone is well dressed. Nowhere to go. This is increasing. Not like that. 
Nanda Maharaj has a little belly fat. Huh? And that Krishna inherited. <laughs> and it is described. Nanda Maharaj has a beard, which when, when Krishna would be placed on the lap of Nanda Maharaj, and in a meeting when Nanda Maharaj is speaking to Upananda Maharaj, Sunanda Maharaj, and they're all sitting and discussing about Braja, Krishna is sitting on the lap of Nanda Maharaj, because he's the future king. So he's sitting. Baba ke godi mein baithenge. So he's sitting on his father's lap, and he's sitting, and he's listening to what, who's, he's not understanding, at least in Mukda Leela, uh, being completely swarat, abhidnya, he knows everything. But being Mukda, according to the covering of Yoga Maya in Brindavan, Krishna as a baby, he's sitting, and he's just looking at who's speaking what. But when Nanda Maharaj starts speaking, he gets to know. Why? Because the beard starts to move. <laughs> so he looks. <laughs> and he's looking at the movement of the jaw of Nanda Maharaj. And he's holding the beard and smiling. <laughs> so sweet. So sweet. How much love. How much love Nanda and Yashoda have. Therefore, Raghupati Upadhyaya has said, Shrutim mitare, smritim apare, bharatam anye bhajantu bhava bhitaha. Aham iha nandam vande, yasya alinde parabrahma. Those who want to get out of this world, those who are yogis, those who study the shastra, let them worship Krishna. He said, but I worship Nanda and Yashoda, in whose courtyard Krishna learned to walk. When our Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard this, hair stood on end and voice was choked and body was trembling and he was embracing Raghupati Upadhyay. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Shunite, shunite, Prabhu Santosha Apar. Bolo, bolo, bale, Prabhu, bale, bar, bar. Keep speaking, keep speaking. This is the glory of Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda. Therefore, you can see, in the Jai Radha Madhava, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, Yashoda Nandana, Vrajajana Ranjana, O son of Yashoda Rani. If you say Krishna, he may or may not hear. But if you say that Krishna, who is the darling sweetheart child of Mother Yashoda, then Gopinath listens. <laughs> Therefore, even the songs, Yashomati Nandana, Bhakti Vinod Thakur starts the song with the son of Yashoda. Hari nama tuva aneka swarupa Hari nama tuva aneka swarupa Bhakti Vinod Thakur says Yashoda anandana ananda vardhana nanda tanaya rasa kupa Yashoda anandana Then Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur Vibhavari Shesha Yashoda du lala govinda gopala. Then say, sixth stanza. Yashoda nandana ananda vardhana. Huh? Continues, parallel songs. Nikunja rasa vilasi. Sometimes he says Yashoda nandana ananda vardhana in Harinamatua. Sometimes he says Yashoda nandana kamsani shudana nikunja rasa vilasi. But Yashoda Rani's name must be there. So much so that Srila Rupa Goswami, now this is quite exciting. Srila Rupa Goswami, while glorifying Krishna, he says, Oh Krishna, you are the killer of Ahasur. By saying this, he is glorifying Mother Yashoda. Now we will say, what is the connection of Ahasur and Mother Yashoda? <laughs> we don't feel like there is a connection between the snake with the mouth open, Ahasur and Mother Yashoda. Look at the connection. Srila Rupa Goswami sings. Agadamana Yashoda Nandano Nanda Suno Kamala Nayana Gopi Chandra Vrindavanendra Pranata Karuna Krishna Ityaneka Swarupe Toimamarati Ruchai Vardhatam Namadheyam He says, Oh Krishna, you are the killer of Aghasur. Now the question is, not just killer of Aghasur, you delivered Aghasur. Correct? And not just delivered Aghasur. Why did you deliver Aghasur? Because of connection to Putana. Brahma ji has said, Sadvesha diva Putana api sakulad. Brahma ji writes in Brahma Stuti. O oh Krishna, you have so much affection for Putana 
just because she had sadvesh please everyone chant sadveshat eva puta napi sakulat brahma ji says oh krishna you have so much affection for putana just because she came dressed in a vaishnava attire that you said i will deliver you i will deliver your brother bakasura and i will deliver your other brother akasura also rupa goswami is writing krishna this is implication this is implied right like for example if you take this kartal if you take this kartal there is a hit and then there is what is called as dhwani right what is the beauty of the instrument is it the hit or is it the dhwani reverberation that comes after dhwani so verses are composed in dhwani which means there is a hit what rup goswami is saying those are the words but then there are implications the dhwani that comes out of it meanings that the acharya is here this is how shastra opens up in real life nayam atma pravachane na labhya na medhaya na bahuna shrutena aham vedmi shukho vetti vyasa vetti na vetti va bhaktya bhagavatam grahiyam na buddhyana chatikaya if through vyakaran and through scholarship one can get krishna then just read the books and go back home back to god it right not so easy why sadhu sangha is needed because the verses of shastra they are the hit but then because of devotion there is dhwani in the heart of the sadhu and the sadhu tasmin mahan mukharita madhubhis charitram he gives that through hari katha so what we didn't hear by the hit of the words the dhwani we hear that sadhu mukhe jani through the lips of the sadhu so shila rupa goswami writes he says agadamana yashoda so the implication of this is o oh krishna you have so much love for putana that you are ready to deliver her make her your mother your nurse and not just her deliver even her two brothers aghasur and bakasur so by killing aghasur krishna is showering mercy to whom putana but rupa goswami is saying why did he shower mercy to putana because the dress of putana reminded him of yashoda agha damana yashoda ananda no nanda suno oh krishna even in your killing of aghasur you are remembering yashoda rani because you remembered yashoda rani in the dress of putana you delivered her and gave her free gift that free pass bakasur ko ek de dena aghasur ko ek de dena so aghasur was liberated because of putana but putana was liberated because of her dress which reminded krishna of mother yashoda this is the glory of mother yashoda <laughs> how amazing shastra describes mother yashoda looks at baby gopal she opens krishna's mouth and krishna is looking what do you want to see mother yashoda is saying i open your mouth what do you want to see that jiva goswami will say so please chant जृंबस्वतातवदनम जृंबस्वतातवदनम परिलोकयामि परिलोकयामि दंतांकुरास्तव किमुन दंतांकुरास्तव किमुन मिशितान वेति मिशितान वेति व्यादत्त एव वदने व्यादत्त एव वदने स्यददर्श माता लग्नात निजस्तन रसस शिलजीव गोस्वामी इज राइटिंग मदर यशोदा टेल्स कृष्ण ओपन योर माउथ लाला ओपन योर माउथ कृष्ण सिंग ओपन ओके ओके यौन मुंह खोलो ऐसे करो जृंबस्वतात वदनम ओपन योर माउथ समर ऑलरेडी ओपनिंग नहीं नॉट नाउ मदर यशोदा इज टेलिंग कृष्णा बस रुखे थे बस 
Mother Yashoda is telling Krishna, Jrimbaswatata Vadanam, oh little baby Gopal, open your mouth. Pari Loka Yami, I want to see inside. So Krishna is saying, what do you want to see? Heart to heart talk is going on. Because Krishna can't speak. It's so literally heart to heart. What do you want to see? So Mother Yashoda says, Dantang Kuras Tava Kimun Mishitana Veti. I want to see if some teeth have come in your mouth, in your gums. I want to see if some teeth have developed. So Krishna says, okay. He opens. Vyadatta eva vadanesya dadarshamata. When Krishna opened, Mother Yashoda looked inside. And she started counting. So many teeth. <laughs> then she realized only three or four were the actual teeth. Other, others were the milk drops after breastfeeding Krishna. Some drops of her milk were still in Krishna's mouth as a baby. And she thought they were teeth and she was counting. And then later she realized only three or four teeth. One here, one here and one here. That's it. And Krishna is smiling. <laughs> <laughs> How beautiful. It is described. Mother Yashoda would place baby Gopal on her lap. Tell him sweet stories. Sometimes pat his hand on Krishna's back. Sometimes lift him, kiss him, embrace him, smell his head. Sometimes lift him up and play with him. Sometimes it is described Mother Yashoda would also give Krishna interesting names. Every day new name. <laughs> what names? That has not been mentioned. But some new name every day. And sometimes as Krishna is looking at Mother Yashoda with so much love, Mother Yashoda places her palm on the head of Krishna and says, As a mother, as the queen of Vrindavan, I bless you. May you live long. It is described, sometimes Krishna as a baby would throw his feet in the air and play on by, by himself. And sometimes Mother Yashoda would see Krishna's fatty thighs, very thick plump thighs and she would smile. And sometimes she would see Krishna, Krishna's wide awake, sleeping, laying down, but he's sucking his thumb. And sometimes Mother Yashoda would see Krishna hold his own toe. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Sometimes Mother Yashoda would see baby Gopal hold on to his own toe and suck it in the mouth. Now, Acharyas have written. Karar vindena padar vindam mukhar vinde viniveshayantam Vatasya patrasya puteshayanam Balam mukundam manasasmarami He Krishna, He Yadava, He Sakheti Govinda Dhamo Dharmadaveti Jivhe Pibasva Amrita Metadeva Govind Dhamo Dharmadhaveti. Krishna is holding the lotus of his palm. With that he is holding the lotus of his feet. And then pushing the lotus of his feet into the lotus of his mouth. <laughs> and he is trying to suck and taste. But nothing is coming. He is saying, my devotees always say, lotus feet, lotus feet, lotus feet. <laughs> lotus means there must be honey. But I'm trying to taste the lotus of my feet and there is nothing sweet. <laughs> to that the Acharyas, right? Oh Krishna, if the petals of the lotus want to taste the nectar in the middle, it's not possible. <laughs> if you want to know how much nectar is there in the whirl of the lotus of your feet, don't test it through the petals. Ask the bumblebees. Ask the bumblebees, we will tell you. Actually, Srila Sridhar Swami, the original commentator, he says Krishna himself is a bumblebee. Here we are saying devotees are bumblebee. He says Krishna is the bumblebee. And in connection to that context, a verse has been written in that line. Kashto yadhyapi vidyate vanachare nugrena bhringena vai. 
तेनई बात्र न छिध्यतेम भुजपलाश सीधु मत्तालिना इत्या स्वाद्य विगूड तत्व मतुलम बाल्ये पी येनो दितम तम दामो दर भ्रिंग भूप मनीशम वंदे यशोदा सुतम एंड द एक्सप्लेनेशन इस व्हेन अ फॉरेस्ट बंबलबी अ हनीबी इज रियली एजिटेटेड हाउ मेनी ऑफ़ अस वांट टू गो प्लीज रेज योर हैंड हाउ मेनी ऑफ़ अस Touch a honeycomb. Prabhu, aap karna hai, karlo, hum nahi karenge. Is mein akela chalega, hum kirtan nahi karenge aapke saath, aap japa karlo. You do it alone, I'm not gonna support you on that, right? So how many of us want to go and agitate a honeybee? Nobody. Nobody. It is said, Kashto yadhyapi bhidhyate vanachare nugre na bringe na vai. When the honeybee is agitated, it can even break through wood. You give kashta, wood, it can cut and make a hole through it when it's agitated. But that same honeybee, te nai vatra na chidhyate ambuja palasha sidhu matalina. Let it land on the central wall of a lotus flower. Let that honeybee drink the nectar of that lotus flower. Then when the sun sets, the lotus petals will close. And this honeybee has two options. Either fly away and save your life, but that means give up the honey. Or continue to drink the honey and who cares about being alive? <laughs> the honeybee continues to drink the honey. In the central part of the lotus flower, the petals close. And it is now so intoxicated drinking that honey. It, when angry, can cut through wood. But now when intoxicated, it can't even cut through the soft petals of the lotus flower. Ittyaswadya viguda tattvam atulam balye piyenoditam. Krishna taught this principle to the whole world in his childhood. Why? Because he's a bumblebee. When he's angry, he can cut through any wood. Putana, Trinavarta, Shakatasur, Agasur, Bhakasur, Denukasur, Arishtasur, any wood. But when he lands on the lotus flower of Mother Yashoda's heart and starts drinking the honey of Vatsalyaras, he becomes so intoxicated that the petals of the rope during Damodar Leela go around his belly and he who can cut through the wood of Putana and Agasur and Bhakasur now can't even cut those ropes which are like petals because he's intoxicated with the Vatsalya Ras honey from the lotus flower of Mother Yashoda. <laughs> Tam Damodara Bhringa Bhupa Manisham Vande Yashoda Sutam. We bow down to that son of Mother Yashoda who is the king of honeybees, who has taught this principle to the whole world. When Mother Yashoda was training baby Gopal. Please chant beautiful words. Kwa vaktram kwa shrotram Kwa tava drigiti Snegda muditaha Purandri vistanyam Guliki salayena Dhigamayan Kwadanta tityuktaha Karakamala madhaya Vadane Smite naivot panna Mama nata iti Vyaktama vadat Acharyas have composed that Mother Yashoda would teach Krishna a few things. And then, all the motherly gopis would come and test how much Krishna has learnt. So they would come and ask Krishna. Kovaktram. Kovaktram means Krishna, where is your face? So what does Krishna do? Anguli kisalayena adhigamayan. With soft petal-like fingers, he points. Ko Vaktram, Lala Krishna, Nanda Gopal, Ko Vaktram. Ko Shrotram, where are your ears? Krishna says. 
Kuatawa Drik. Where are your eyes? Eyes. Then they tell Krishna, now very tough question. Kuanasika? Where is your nose? Krishna says, so simple. This is it. Now this is a real tough question, Krishna. Kodanta. Where are your teeth? Now Krishna has no teeth. Only th- in the mouth. In the mouth there are only three teeth. Kodanta. Where are your teeth? Iti uktaha. When asked, Kara kamalam adhaya vadane smite naivot panna mama na iti. Vyaktam avadat. Krishna smiled. And he said, <laughs> Mama na te. Mere daat aye nahi. <laughs> Which means I don't have teeth. Smite naiva, ut, naiva, naiva utpanna. They have not come in my mouth yet. As soon as Krishna said like this, Mother, you should have picked him up. Good boy. <laughs> <laughs> It is described, Mother Yashoda has so much love for Krishna that when she embraces Krishna, Srila Rupa Goswami writes, it is the mixture of three things. By the way, this world is quite an interesting world. Very, very interesting. There is heat everywhere. There is heat outside because of temperature. There is heat in the mind because of anger. There is heat because of envy. There's heat in the throat because of singing and speaking too much. There's heat in the stomach. <laughs> Prabhuji, you finish it, then we will fill it. When are you talking? Let that fire be extinguished. You finish quickly, then we'll have prasadam. <laughs> so there is fire here, there is fire here, there is fire here. There is fire outside. There is also fire in relationships because of Criticizing each other, finding faults. There is fire of lust burning in the heart. So it has to be put down. It has to be extinguished. So you have to use something cooling. So the question is asked, what is that cool? Cooling, rejuvenating, refreshing, coolant that can be used to put this fire out. So Shastra says, Chandanam Shitalam Loke Chandanad api chandrama, chandra chandana yor madhye. Now four pad- the fourth line will come. Chandanam shitalam loke. In this world the most cooling thing is chandan. But chandanad api chandrama. More cooling than the sandalwood paste is the moon beams, the night sky. But however, chandra chandana yor madhye. There is something which is more cooling than sandalwood and moonbeams. For that, we have to chant the verse again. Chandanam shitalam loke. Chandanam shitalam loke. Chandanadapi chandrama. Chandanadapi chandrama. Chandra chandana yor madhye. Chandra chandana yor madhye. Shitala sadhu sangati. Shitala sadhu sangati. More cooling than sandalwood are the moonbeams. But the most cooling thing that ever exists is the association of sadhus, Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis. Because in their association, all this fire gets peaceful. Lust, greed, envy, anger, hunger, (laughs) everything. All the fire is put off. All the fire is put off. So now it is described. It is described by Srila Rupa Goswami. There is a medicinal herb called as Ushira plant. It's an Ayurvedic herb. And when you put it in water overnight, and then it is used, it cools down the body. Rupa Goswami Pad writes, when Mother Yashoda embraces Krishna to her heart, Krishna feels the cooling of Chandan, 
Chandrama, Sadhu Sangati, and the cooling effect of the Ushira herb. All of that put together and much more is the loving motherly embrace of Mother Yashoda that baby Gopal relishes while he is in the arms of his mother. How sweet. It is described one time Mother Yashoda was holding baby Gopal in her arms and one sadhu came. He came for arms. He was a very thin sadhu. Srila Prabhupada writes this in Nectar of Devotion, this pastime. Mother Yashoda was holding baby Gopal and there was a knock at the door. So she opened the door and there was a thin sadhu. He was a little older and he had a gunny sack on his back and a begging bowl. Bikrandei. Bhavati Bikrandei. He came for arms, Madhukari. Mother Yashoda understood he is a sadhu. I need to give some prasadam. But Gopal, baby Gopal, baby Gopinath. <laughs> when our little Gopinath saw this sadhu for the first time, he got scared. Because this sadhu had big beard and moustache and like different types of tilak. And he was very thin and he had a stick and a begging bowl and a gunny sack. So he started moving. So Mother Yashoda had held Krishna and she opened the door and she was talking to the sadhu. Now Krishna is here. So Krishna started turning towards the back of Mother Yashoda. So Mother Yashoda said, why are you scared? He's a sadhu. Krishna said, don't, don't bring me close to him. <laughs> Mother Yashoda said, what's the problem? Krishna said, what if he puts me in that gunny sack? <laughs> Prabhupada writes this first time. What if he puts me in that gunny sack? Mother Yashoda said, then what will happen? Nothing is going to happen. If he puts it in the gunny sack, what will happen? Krishna said, oh Maya, what if he takes me forever? I will be separated from you. Please don't do anything that will separate you and me. So immediately Mother Yashoda pulled Krishna like this and gave Madhukari. <laughs> There is a parallel story with Nanda Baba also. Nanda Baba once was holding baby Gopal. And a palmist came. He who reads the lines in the palm. Hmm? Samudrika Lakshana Shastra. Face reading, palm reading, ityadi. So Nanda Baba was holding baby Gopal. This palmist came. He said, I, can I serve anybody in Vrindavan? Nanda Baba said, we are all fine. Can you see the baby palm of my Gopal? So the palm is look, that small lotus petal, like little small palm with no developed lines. <laughs> so the palm is said, how can I read anything here? After a few years, when the lines are developed, I will read. Nanda Baba said, I just want to know one thing. The palm is said, I can astrologically generate the chart and tell you if you want. Nanda Baba said, okay. So he very quickly generated the chart and he looked at the chart and the palmist astrologer was amazed because he understood this person is not the one under the grahas he is the one who has created the grahas <laughs> so, so he looked at Gopal he looked at Gopal, this astrologer and Nanda Baba asked I have just one question can you tell me how long will my child live I hope he has Dirgayu. And one more thing I want to ask. Will he grow up to be a good king taking care of all my cows? Dhyausha chandrarkha nakshatra kham dishabhu mahodadhi vasudevasya viryena vidrutani mahatmana sa sura sura gandharva sa yaksha uraga rakshasam jagat vashe sarvamidam krishnasya sacharacharam Bhishma Dev in the Vishnu Sahasranam while leaving his body, when Krishna is present in front of Bhishma Dev's lotus eyes, Bhishma Dev tells the Pandavas, Do you know who this Krishna is? He says, This is the same Krishna. Dhyoscha Chandrar Khanakshatra Kham Dishabhu Mahodadhi. The Directions, the sky, the earth, water, fire, air, ether, the mountains, the oceans. Sura, Asura, Gandharva, Yaksha, Uraga, Rakshasam. 
जगत वशे सर्वमिदम कृष्ण से सचराचरम जिनके वश में सब कुछ है दिस इज दैट वासुदेव दिस इज दैट कृष्ण एंड नाउ नंद महाराज इज एस्किंग विल ही ग्रो अप टू टेक केयर ऑफ माई काउस and the palmist doesn't know what to say because as far as life krishna is eternal as far as owning cows krishna owns everything so the astrologer smiled he didn't know what to say because if he says the truth it will break or at least he is attempting to break nanda maharaj's parental love and if he doesn't say that and says something else then it is lie so in such circumstances the palmist astrologer he smiled and he said he will live long it is described looking at krishna's bodily beauty when krishna was growing up locks of soft black curly hair were jumping onto his eyes krishna's eyes were like lotus petals and these locks of soft black bumblebee hair were trying to drink the nectar of that beauty Krishna's hair was like bumblebee honey bee drinking the honey of Krishna's lotus petal like eyes it was jumping mother yashoda would bind it on the top like this and krishna would jump around all day playing with his friends and that would loosen and when he comes home krishna is moving and looking at everyone and <laughs> the lotus of krishna's face the lotus of his eyes are with the nectar of his innocence is attracting the honey bees of his beautiful black hair it is described krishna's eyes have multi layer kajal that mother yashoda pulls up to the ear <laughs> and on the forehead mother yashoda puts tilak with cow dung and cow urine because he is going to be the king of brindavan isi dhuli se aaj lala ko tilak hoga <laughs> this is for the forehead and this is for the uh, the uh, hair and the eyes and it's described krishna's eyes started looking even more beautiful with age they started getting redder reddish and whitish tinge very beautiful with compassion always filled with moist tears then it is described mother yashoda would pull an uh, would place a nice pearl nose ring in the septal or the septum of his nose there used to be a nice white pearl nose ring and when mother yashoda would say something krishna would smile and it would seem as if the smile is coming from behind the pearl nose ring and then sometimes when mother yashoda would say something krishna would smile and with his teeth he would hold on to his lips and then at that time the acharyas described krishna's teeth would be like moonbeams and the reddish lips would be like the crimson red color on the moon drishtva kumudavantam akhanda mandalam jagau kalam vamadrisham manoharam bhagavatam describes when krishna was dancing on the night of rasalila the moon which is white had reddish color reddish white pinkish complexion so the white moon like teeth was mixing with the reddish color of his lips then it is described mother yashoda every morning she would wake up and chant many mantras praying to vishnu praying to narasimha dev please protect my gopal <laughs> whatever prarabdha is there from so many lifetimes in his patrika please put all of that in my name she is praying to who nishinga de for the protection of <laughs> krishna stu bhagavan swayam it is described mother yashoda would put sometimes some kavacha also around krishna's arms around his waist sometimes on the neck and would say when you go into the forest hold balaram's hand very tightly no going here and there krishna says okay i will not go anywhere i'll sit at home no 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 you go <laughs> but in the forest you don't go anywhere okay maya enough rules can i go now 
Okay, okay, one last rule. No climbing trees, okay? Because you'll climb trees, you know to climb, but you don't know how to get down. <laughs> you'll climb up there and you'll sit on the branch and cry. Then Balaram has to climb. Then both of you don't know how to get down. <laughs> <laughs> then one of us have to come, then we will get you down. So no climbing. <laughs> Krishna says, okay, I'll not climb. Can I at least take a fruit? <laughs> Mother Yashoda says, no taking fruit. Sometimes some snakes are wrapped around the branch. They bite the fruit. Fruit becomes poisonous. No eating those fruits. Okay. <laughs> now can I go? Okay, one con last condition. <laughs> no jumping into water. You don't know to swim. Okay, I'll not jump into water. Can I go now? <laughs> Maya, please, can I go? Okay, okay, one last. <laughs> no getting into caves. Because you can't come out. What if somebody blocks you? Krishna said, I remember that story you told me. Wali. No, 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 I will not enter caves. <laughs> Can I go? Okay, one last. No going under the sun. You don't need a suntan. <laughs> okay, I will not. Now I am... Can I go? I am going. Can I go? One last. <laughs> Don't forget to tightly hold the little finger of Dao Bhaiya, Balaram. No leaving. Okay? Wherever you go, he will protect you. Balaram turned to Mother Yashoda. <laughs> and Balaram said, can we go now? <laughs> Mother Yashoda said, on one condition. Promise me, you will protect my Gopal. Balaram said, Oh mother, I give you my word, I will protect Krishna like how the eyelids protect the eyeball. <laughs> it is described that as Krishna was growing up, Mother Yashoda would ask Krishna interesting questions. Mother Yashoda would ask, what is the name of the one whom you like? <laughs> Nanda Baba would also sit. Tell me. <laughs> whom do you like the most? So Krishna would say, Mata. So Nanda Baba would say, okay. <laughs> Nanda Baba would say, let me ask the question again. Whom do you like the most? Krishna said, Mata. <laughs> oh, mother? Krishna said, no. Ma means Mata. Ta means Tata. <laughs> mother and father, Mata. I like both of you. This verse has been given here. Then Mother Yashoda would ask Krishna interesting questions. And with this, in about five minutes, we will conclude because we don't want to disrupt the schedule. <laughs> Whatever my Baladev Prabhu tells me, <laughs> I am holding on to his little finger. <laughs> Maybe five more minutes? So, Mother Yashoda, would ask Krishna, please everyone chant. Ishita kim jagatyamam, Ishita kim jagatyamam, Bandhun pasya sina kimam, Bandhun pasya sina kimam, Ityadi matru sutayo, Ityadi matru sutayo, Samvadavat abhut iha, Samvadavat abhut iha. Mother Yashoda would ask Krishna, Ishitha Kim Jagatyam, after growing up, will you do something big in this world? Krishna would say, um. 
यस 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 ओके बंधुन पास न किम वोट यू प्रोटेक्ट ऑल योर फ्रेंड्स यस इत्यादि मातृ सुतयो संवादवत अभूत इह दिस इज एज फार एज द कॉन्वर्जेशन वुड गो मदर यशोदा वुड एज क्वेश्चन एंड कृष्णा वुड से बिकॉज दैट्स द ओनली थिंग ही हैड लर्न आचार्य से एक्चुअली कृष्ण वो सेंग ओम प्रणव सर्व वेदेशु यू वो सेंग ओम 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 वन डिवोटी से ही वॉज एक्चुअली सेंग ओम बट इफ यू कीप सेंग ओम 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 इट बिकम्स मॉम 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 देन मदर यशोदा वुड टेल कृष्ण सो मेनी थिंग्स teach him stories riddles jokes poetry and krishna would repeat how would he repeat shastra says please kindly repeat agyat vacham agyat vacham shukhavat patantam shukhavat patantam agyat vacham shukhavat patantam whatever mother yashoda would teach him shukhavat patantam like a parrot krishna would repeat he wouldn't understand but he would just repeat and in the middle as mother yashoda would keep speaking krishna had a habit what was the habit vishesh pricha vishesh pricha kriti tarjanikam kriti tarjanikam dhatri janadhya dhatri janadhya pitavak pracharam pitavak pracharam vrajasya bhagyam मदर यशोदा वुड कीप टीचिंग वुड टीच कृष्ण स्टोरीज एंड कृष्ण वुड रिपीट लाइन बाय लाइन मदर यशोदा इज सेंग सो यू नो देन राम ही है राम हैड राम हैड वाइफ वाइफ एंड राम वेंट फॉर फॉरेस्ट एंड देन राम ही फॉर द बैटल एंड वेंट टू ही वेंट बैक टू अयोध्या अयोध्या सो कृष्ण वुड कीप रिपीटिंग लाइक अ फेरेट and as a result sometimes things would not be clear in his mind as far as the story is concerned so as mother yashoda continues vishesh pricha kriti tarjanikam again and again with his tarjani mane this four finger so krishna would lift his four finger again and again mother yashoda would say what happened but you said like this then how that became like this <laughs> then mother yashoda would answer Did you understand Krishna? Yes, yes. And then again, like parrot, he would repeat. And then after again, sometime he would put his finger up. And in this way, Vrajasya Bhagyam Paritas Marami. Shila Jeev Goswami Pad says, I remember the source of all fortune. He who asked questions later solved everybody's questions through the Gita. <laughs> so even the Bhagavad Gita. कीर्तनम हैपेन फ्रॉम कृष्ण लोटस स्लिप्स ये स्वयं पद्मनाभ से मुख पद्मा विनिश्रित कीर्तनम इज नॉट पॉसिबल विदउट श्रवण सो मदर यशोदा टॉट कृष्ण देर फॉर कृष्ण कुड स्पीक गीता सो इवन भगवद गीता इज एन ऑफरिंग ऑफ कृष्ण लव टू हिज मदर मदर यशोदा एक्चुअली वन टाइम इट इज सो ब्यूटिफुल एंड विद दिस आई वुड कंक्लूड should i stop now <laughs> <laughs> so when shila prabhupad came to boston it is described his holiness sat swarup maharaj and others they would do a very beautiful voice over dramatic audio representation of the krishna book they would go and that used to be aired on the local radio station so regularly once a week they would go to the studio and they would read krishna book but in a very dramatic way like satswarup maharaj would play krishna and let's say one mataji would play mother yashoda etc and they recorded so many chapters like that so when shila prabhupad came to boston he was told about this radio service so prabhupad said i would like to tune in and hear what is being read today and it was the past time of kaliya 
Krishna and Kaliya. And Krishna was caught in the coils of Kaliya. And the Mataji who was doing the voiceover, she was doing the voiceover for Mother Yashoda. And Mother Yashoda's pangs of separation and anxiety that a mother has when her child, Krishna, is caught between the coils of Kaliya. She was screaming. She was yelling, screaming with anxiety, with pangs of stress and separation. She wanted her Gopal back. And those emotions were dramatically expressed by this Mataji. So Srila Prabhupada was listening. And at the end, he said, who is that devotee who is doing voiceover for Mother Yashoda? So they said a certain name. Prabhupada said, please call her. I have something to say to her. So when that Mataji got to know, she was scared. <laughs> Prabhupada heard it and he heard me do it. And now Prabhupada wants to see not everyone but just me. <laughs> so she went. She offered her obeisances. Prabhupada had his eyes closed. And he looked at her and his eyes were brimming with tears. And Srila Prabhupada said, continue to cry for Krishna like this. He said, I heard your voiceover of Mother Yashoda. He said, Krishna loves his mother. Continue to cry for Krishna like this. Your life will be successful. This is the position of Mother Yashoda. Such beautiful position of Mother Yashoda. Mother Yashoda has so much protective instinct for Krishna that she would put a gold necklace around the chest of Krishna with a tiger nail. The claws of a tiger. The nail of a tiger, like this. With the intention that if any ghost, Brahma Rakshasa Yakshanam Duro Tsarana Karanam, if there's any Brahma Rakshasa, any ghost haunting into Krishna's body, then may this tiger nail chew everyone away. This is Mother Yashoda's love. Srila Rupa Goswami writes, Mother Yashoda has so much love for Krishna. Please hear this very carefully. This is so beautiful. This is really beautiful. Srila Rupa Goswami explains, Mother Yashoda has so much love for Krishna that if Krishna is the rain cloud, Mother Yashoda is the Chataka Pakshi. If Krishna is the moon, then Mother Yashoda is the Chakora Pakshi. Sukha se he sukha, Shri Hari Mukha, Pahata hi bhuka taha nahi geli. Bhetali bhetali vithai mauli vasana jiva til niwali. Chandrasi chakor, meghasi mayur, vate taisa bhar anandacha. Nama mane paap taap dukha gele sukha bolavin. America Made Astana Itparanta Yeta Marathi Bolnare Maharashtra Nayati Bayer Nigat Nai Santavani Pony Ithe was lucky Srila Rupa Goswami writes Mother Yashoda has so much love for Krishna. All mothers may be able to relate to this and way beyond. Rupa Goswami writes, Mother Yashoda has so much love for Gopal. If she has to stand on fire to see the face of Krishna, she prefers to do that all her life. Just to see the face of Krishna if Mother Yashoda has to stand on forest fire all her life, she is ready to do that. On the other hand, it is described so beautifully. Even if she is drowning in the ocean of nectar, but if she cannot see the smiling face of Krishna, then that ocean is like arsenic poison. For her, her life revolves around selfless, loving service to Krishna. 
our purport for today was on that. How to serve Krishna with no ulterior agenda. And who can be a greater example than Krishna's mother herself? Who is loving Krishna unlimitedly. Therefore, to conclude, Aho, aho, bheer Nakaler vidhu yate Sudha, sudhara Madhuram pade pade Dine, dine Chandana chandra shitale Yasho Yashoda Tanayasya Giyate It is said Aho Aho Vir Nakaler Vidhuyate Sudha Sudhara Madhuram Pade Pade The sun, the scorching heat of the sun of Kali Yuga has no effect on a person who Dine Dine Chandana Chandra Shitale Yasho Yashoda Tanayasya Giyate it is described the scorching heat of Kali Yuga, the distress, the pain, the anarthas, the aparad, the effect of Kali Yuga is not found. On the other hand, the person's body is smeared with sandalwood paste and he's basking in the moon beams of the full moon and he feels so comforted at every step. Who is this person? Yasho, Yashoda, Tanayasya Giyate who sings, hears, reads and meditates on the loving relationship that Gopal shares with his mother, Mother Yashoda. <laughs> Having said this, in the interest of the time and the schedule, I would I would beg forgiveness from all the Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis for any mistakes that may have occurred during the discussion, during the service. So many wonderful senior Vaishnavas present here. So many Vaishnavas, Vaishnavis present here. I beg at all of your lotus feet, please forgive me. Please offer your blessings. May what we discuss paint the canvas of our heart with the colors of selfless service to the lotus feet of Sri Sri Radha Gopina. There is nothing else. There is no other treasure in our heart than to love and express that love through service. And at the end of service, what we desire is more service. This is all that we aspire for. I offer my obeisances at all of your lotus feet. And please offer your blessings. Last. Last but not the least, thank, thank you. <laughs> Last but not the least, I would like to express my gratitude, my prostrated obeisances in complete surrender, obedience, submission, respectful surrender and affection at the lotus feet of His Holiness Radhanath Swami Maharaj, who, who through decades and decades of instructions, Hari Katha, Hari Kirtan, Yatra, by his personal example and such Vaishnav culture has generated waves and tides of oceanic explosion all around the world as a wonderful, pure representative of Srila Prabhupada's compassion. To Maharaj's lotus feet, I offer my obeisances and I express my gratitude lifetime after lifetime. To Srila Prabhupada, who gave us this temple by pointing his stick. 
in the direction. Srila Prabhupada, who created temples after temples, not just outside, but also the temples in our hearts. He gave us the books, he gave us the classes, he gave us his disciples, he gave us the deities, he gave us the holy name, he gave us the Vaishnav bhajans, he gave us the prasadam, he gave us each other to Srila Prabhupada. And all his wonderful disciples, headed by his grace, Yadubar Prabhu. We offer our obeisances. Srila Prabhupada ki. Thank you very much.